Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be week number four, I believe, of the MPL, the Minor Pokemon League. And uh, this is going to be a really interesting week. We are going to be up against Johnny GB and he beat us really, really badly. We played him in PGBL season two and uh, it was pretty rough, it was pretty rough. But here we are, we have a really interesting dynamic. He has a pretty decent rain team. I have a little bit of a sun core going on. This is going to be the full matchup. I honestly wasn't sure whether or not he would want to bring like the full rain situation, but you can see he brought the full rain situation and uh, Mega Medicham is going to be difficult to deal with. Um, you know the Pelipper um, with all the rain options is going to be difficult to deal with and that Ludicolo especially, but um, also that Mimikyu, that Mimikyu on its own is an absolute killer, so it's going to be a really difficult situation to deal with. I'm just going to get into the match. Um, if I remember correctly, I let off with my Chinchino. My Chinchino has honestly been such a good, just dedicated lead. I feel like it deals with a lot. It can cover a lot. Um, I was honestly kind of expecting a Pelipper lead, and it honestly does lead off with a Vicavolt. I do end up leading off with my Chinchino. I, I really do just love that Chinchino lead. It can scare many things out. It can U-turn out. It can... It's so good. And here, I knew he would expect me to kind of have the Rock Blast, but at the same time, I did some count and I knew that I would have needed some chip damage onto the Vicka Vault before I can freely click Rock Blast. And I click U-Turn. It does so much damage to this dang Metacham. And uh, I'm able to just U-Turn out, go into Zygarde, and start threatening this Metacham a little bit. And now, that said, I know he can fake me out, but at the same time, it's worth it in the longer run if I can... Uh, scare this thing out and put this in a position where I can just, um, freely start clicking those narrows, banded, uh, extreme speed, something like that. And, in honesty, I didn't know what I could switch in, what I could bring in here to take this fake out. If I, Zygarde felt like as good as option as any, even though it wasn't really the best option no matter what. Regardless, uh, he gets a big fake out off, and, and I also get to gauge out that damage, and it does about 30 to 40 ish percent somewhere in that range and uh, like I said I can just freely click that fan a thousand arrows and judging from that Pelipper damage we can tell that it's pretty darn physically defensive but still doing that much damage uh, it's pretty darn huge it's going to be huge for the later game but I know I can't stay in here I thought maybe it wanted to scald or ice beam me it ends up going for the toxic expecting that switch out so and that was a little bit unfortunate but um we're in decent shape here. We're in decent shape. I don't like my Jelson getting toxic, and unfortunately, it's been a little bit of a theme this season, but it's okay. For right now, we can deal with it. For right now, we can deal with it. He has the obvious switch into Ludicolo, but uh, I knew that he would want to switch into a Rain Sweeper or just generally Skull or do something here. So I felt like my Torkoal would be the best switch in. I, I knew I had to play a little bit aggressively on my double switches and I really wanted to get that momentum going with that double switching, let him know that I was willing to make those double switches when it matters with that um, rain. And I believe I pull another double here because uh, I knew that uh, under rain, or, or in the sun. Oh no, I'm sorry. I click Stealth Rocks, in fact. But no, um, I knew that he wouldn't want to stay in, so I knew I had a free turn no matter what with that Ludicolo in there against my Torkoal. And now I can switch back out and I go into my Chinchino. I honestly kind of expected him to kind of defog, maybe Roost, so I thought that um, this switch in uh, would be free. I didn't expect him to go out into his Pelipper straight away. Um, but... In any case, it's an opportunity for me to bring in this thing for free, and I can get a very, very free hit off. Again, I knew that he was going to want to uh, make another aggressive switch. I did call that uh, in the moment. I clicked U-turn, and I believe I go into Torkoal here yet. Yeah. I go into Torkoal just because I know that this is what I have to do. I have to play super duper aggressively. I have to get momentum going early and play a little bit more aggressively than I would normally, and I believe this is where I pull a double now, if I'm not mistaken. I know he's going to be taking rocks damage, and I'm a little bit free to pull a double. If I remember correctly, please tell me I actually do that. Um, I would imagine I maybe go into uh, Chinchino here, if I remember correctly. No, I actually go into my Zepstrika. So my Zepstrika can actually Volt Switch around for free, um, the rain notwithstanding. But he ends up going into the Vicavolt, which is huge. Now, my Zepstrike is actually Fire EMZ, specifically for the Deblade. But me being able to click Volt Switch for absolutely free against his team and let me get that chip damage after rocks, um, 
lets me know that I can absolutely take this out unless it's like max defensive. It, it, it can take me, it allows me to take uh, this Vicable out with a Rock Blast here from Chinchino. So I believe that's what I go for. I know that now I'm, at, now I'm at a moment where I can't really be playing these or or I know I could get the momentum but uh, at this point I really just have to be a little bit aggressive here so that's where I go for the rock blast I take that KO onto the Vic Vault and uh, I'm feeling pretty good about my positioning uh, that Vic Vault like I said Vic Vault could have been really really huge in that situation but thankfully 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 we had ways of dealing with it and in comes the Kingdra. Unfortunately, we did have to leave this Kingdra in on rain after taking out the Vicka Vault, but I end up bringing in this thing, kind of preventing him from going for any water attacks, and he drops a Draco. And I believe, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this Draco damage confirms that he is choice specs. But uh, by the looks of it, after a Toxic and Leftovers and all that whatnot, that I would possibly be able to uh, recover up on this thing and I felt like that was a risk that I had to take but uh, being specs he did decide to switch out and I will get a recover offer relatively free maybe he expected me to do something else I'm not too too sure but in any case now I'm in a position where I can recover up for pretty much free other than that toxic damage which is super obnoxious super obnoxious but for right now it's okay for right now we can deal with it but uh, I end up switching out. I believe I would have switched out. No, I switched out into the Zep Strika, which was super unfortunate. So, okay, the only reason that I did this and I didn't switch out into, say, um, Torkoal here was because I expected him to want to defog or roost back up. I did not expect him to scald. 100% did not expect that scald coming in. I wish I hadn't uh, switched into the, the Zep Strika in hindsight, but it is what it is. But that said... Volt Switch is absolutely free against this team. I, it does big damage. Uh, I believe I'm a modest max special attack uh, Zep Strika, and Volt Switch is going to wear down his team over time and give me the freest of sun by letting in my Torkoal for free. So we are playing these Weather Wars, but as long as I can be aggressive, I know that I can come ahead in these Weather Wars, and I pull a relatively uh, aggressive double, and I go into the... Uh, the Chinchino, and I guess he called that 50 50. Uh, I could have stayed in, eaten a Giga Drain, and gotten a decently sized hit off, but uh, I end up just clicking U turn here. It does a very, very good amount of damage, and yeah, okay, so I end up going into the um, Rabombi here. As he goes for another Giga Drain, uh, I'm confident enough that I can take it despite it being life warped. I'm unfortunately giving back, giving him back HP, but it just is what it is. It, I don't quite know what I can do in this situation. Now here, I'm actually a little bit uh, disappointed in myself. Yeah, okay, this is a huge, huge, huge turn. Huge turn. I end up going for the Sticky Web, right? And if I'd been a little bit more aggressive here and uh, click Moonblast, broken the disguise, I would have been in a fantastic position. But I end up going for the Moonblast here and uh, just to break the disguise now because I'm confident enough that uh, he's gonna click Source Dance here. He can't. He's not really in a position to Shadow Sneak me right now, and I have to break the disguise. If I don't break the disguise now, then he destroys me. He beats me with a Mickey on its own. Um, but if I'd been just a little bit more aggressive, the Sticky Webs was there as a little bit of an insurance policy so that maybe I can um, take advantage of his team just a little bit more, but it was unnecessary at the point. At that point, I had so much momentum going on my side, and I had the Chinchino to, to, to come in on this Mimikyu, so be me into Shadow Sneak. I was just so disappointed in myself uh, at clicking that sticky whip. It didn't even feel like the right move in the moment. It just I, I just didn't know what else to do. I didn't have U-turn on my Rabombi, unfortunately, and U-turn would have been uh, gigantic there. And he misses a play rough, which is super unfortunate. I am able to get a big bullet seed off on him, and it's actually going to allow me to take him out with a second bullet seed. He misses that play rough. Now, admittedly, this looks bad in the moment. I 100% agree, but um, even at plus two, he told me after after the match that he was Ghost DMZ. No matter what, um, at plus two, if if we assume adamant, if we assume the worst, absolutely everything. I know my Torkoal takes a plus two Neverending Nightmare and hits him back with a Lava Plume, 
So no matter what, he takes out my Chinchino. I'm able to uh, hit it back to revenge it with the Torkoal. And um, we're basically in a similar position. But I pretty aggressively switch on my Torkoal because it is as physically defensive as it is. And uh, I believe I just end up, yeah, I, I double into something. Uh, I double into this thing, I, I guess, to take a hit. Maybe I expected a double. Oh, he drain punches. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I was a reasonably physically defensive Jellicent, and uh, I wanted to be able to try to recover up on this. Maybe I expected a double. I think more so I expected a double. I think that's what that uh, moment was, but he goes for a Drain Punch again, probably expecting me to triple switch? I don't know. In any case, I miss Will-O-Wisp here, and my argument to Johnny after the match was that that missing Will-O-Wisp was... Close, somewhere in the neighborhood of as big as him missing that play rough. And I ended up going for the Will-O-Wisp again, which was a horrible, horrible move on my, on my part. I admit that. There was no reason to. I knew he was going to switch out, and he had uh, plenty of options to switch into. I just didn't know what to do. I was kind of shook after I missed that Will-O-Wisp, in all honesty. I... That was a bad play on my part. But... Um, my argument to... After this match is over, right after this match is over, I'm going to try to make an argument as to uh, why that Will-O-Wisp miss was bigger in the longer run for this uh, game than that play rough miss. And like I said, I could have dealt with that play rough miss. And you can see, he he ends up uh, defogging away my webs anyway. So even further proof that that play before was a pretty bad play on my part. But that aside, um... With that Mega Metacham being less strong after that Will-O-Wisp, I think I'm able to deal with it in this later run, and, it, and I feel like it really changes this match later on in the game. But in any case, I end up switching out into my Torkoal here. Um, part of me kind of thought it would go for the Water Move, being relatively safe um, in in the rain and expect me to fish out, but no, he ends up going for the, for the Draco. I guess that, that's never played because of Water Absorb, but... Uh, I knew from the Calx that because he took me out on, on this play that he almost certainly had to be Specs. I'm still not 100% sure. Uh, I never checked up with him, uh, with Johnny after the match, but it looks like this is Specs based on that. But in the sun, now I can just freely bring in my Chinchino. I can Bullet Seed. I didn't expect it to take this thing out, but unfortunately it was not in range where Zip Strike could do anything, and unfortunately I was Fire MZ for the Blade in... Uh, and possibly the, the Ludicolo and not Electrium Z, which would have been able to deal with the team that he brought a little bit better. But regardless, he's going to Draco again, which is going to bring uh, his special attack down even further. And uh, now I'm in a position where I can deal with his team, where I can deal with his team a little bit better because uh, now I'm in a I'm in a position where uh, he's going to have to switch out, or I feel like I could take advantage of this moment and I can. Um, recover up especially because especially because uh there's no more opportunities for rain anymore now in retrospect this is a absolutely terrible play because if i'd been more aggressive i would have never given this ludicolo as much hp as i as i'm going to uh i don't have to make this sack if i had been more aggressive brought in zeb strike up and uh, gotten another Volt Switch off, which would have KO'd the Kingdra, which would have done a lot of damage to this Ludicolo, put it in a position where uh, I can deal with it with something else. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't play aggressively, and I had to sack off my Kingdra for no reason, because... I'm sorry, I had to sack off my Zep Striker for no reason, because um, I didn't want to give him that much HP back with... Um, I didn't have to give him as much HP back with uh, that Giga Drain that he that he would that he would have gone with on the Jellicent. But now I'm in a position where I can just spam Bounded Thousand Arrows. Uh, sorry, Bounded Extreme Speed. And here's where I argue that it, that it really matters because you can see how much I took from that initial fake out and that pretty much confirms that if he was burned, a fake out plus Bullet Punch would have meant that uh, he never takes me out even with that combination. He would have had to bullet punch me twice just to have a chance to take me out. So, I know that I can extreme speed into this thing for absolutely free. 
and if he had taken a round or two of, of burn damage as well, then uh, I'd be in a position where uh, it, I could just, again, spam extreme speed. I never even have to touch thousand arrows. I just win from there with that banded extreme speed. And uh, yeah, like I said, obviously that uh, play rough miss was pretty bad, but this late game with a will-o'-wisp hit would have gone a lot smoother for me and I mentioned a whole bunch of my misplays uh like not bringing in Zeb Stryka I wanted to take the opportunity to, to recover up which in the longer run was not ideal and um that god awful sticky webs play but uh I do think I had the tools to beat him with or without that play rough miss I think if anything the only thing that play rough miss did in the bigger picture was um it would have forced me to kind of use my Torkoal. It still could have been my switch into Kingdra. I still could have sacked it off in that moment. And like I said, all I needed was another round or two of burn damage and the ability to spam extreme speed in order for me to, to win that one without even having to go into that Jellicent in that later game. So who knows, I could not be making any sense at all. But in my mind, I think I had the resources to win that match regardless of that play rough miss. And that will o miss made it really difficult for me to win that match. And like I said, I did misplay 100%, did make those uh, two big misplays and I'm sure many misplays that I didn't even that I just papered over a little bit but I 100% do not believe that that play rough miss was the sole reason that I won it of course it's unfortunate but in the end it is what it is we do end up taking this win we did defeat the heretofore undefeated Johnny GP and uh hopefully we can end out this season respectively we can have some fun with it I really do like my team I think uh, I can do some more things with this team I think I can surprise some people and we can have some fun with it but that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more MPL, more UBL, more ICBA, and other stuff as well. But with that, I'll be once again out.